we're here on location at the uh, 2014 J Concept Super Cup. This is the spring series, the first race of the 2014 season. And Jason, tell us a little bit about the Super Cup. Well, it's something we've been doing here um, in Florida since 2009. This is a eight race series and it's separated by the spring and fall sessions. We have four races in each session and it's your best three, three out of four in each session. So uh, we just held our banquet for 2013. Uh, we gave out you know, well over 200 awards and uh, for the two sessions combined. So uh, we've been doing this since 2009. So uh, we're gonna keep rocking this uh, Super Cup every year. And uh, we, we like to do something a little fun with the banquets each time and kind of really let loose and everyone have a good time there. And, and uh, everybody's kind of turned into be really good friends on, on this series. And uh, that's kind of what we want. You know, it's good competitive racing and uh, showcases some product out here. And uh, people are making some friends and some buddies. Here in the pits with J.R. Mitch at the 2014 J Concept Super Cup. Okay, and a typical day for you in the pits. There's a lot of work going on. I see you have a specific layout. We'll go over that there in a little bit. But uh, what are you running here today? Uh, Two-wheel drive modified, four-wheel drive modified, and four-wheel drive uh, short course. Okay, and what's your tires of choice? Of course, you're J Concept's team driver. Uh, we have the new dirt webs here, I see. And uh, how are those running for you? They're really good. Um, Jason and Paul and everybody do a lot of testing here, come, uh, come here fairly often and uh, narrow down what tire and everything that works really good. They are the, the, the most traction, the most side bite that you, uh, you need out there to go fast. In that uh, SCRC raceway here in uh, Cocoa, Florida, you go the uh, mid-motor, the uh, car of choice here. They're a lot better, more stable at higher speeds. So your, your sweepers and stuff like that, they, they don't tend to roll as much. So you can you can carry the corner speed through the corners a little bit more. So, um, but then there's a takeaway from that that it doesn't have as much traction. But if you have traction, it's going to help you out. So, um, it's definitely the the car of choice. I would say all of the cars in the main here are uh, mid motor cars. So, uh, it's uh, it's pretty uh, it's pretty close racing out there. Now, uh, let's go through your pits here a little bit. I mean, you travel all over the country, all over the world racing RC cars. And, uh, you know, you're kind of limited to the space in some pit areas on how much area you can have. And, but there's a lot of necessities that you have to have in your pits, and you have a kind of a certain way of laying things out. Let's just go through your pits here and uh, go through, uh, you know, what a typical pit is for you. Right. Well, like here at the, here at the Super Cup, you know, we, get a, we have our own tents and everything else, so it's, uh, we get a little... And we can expand a little bit. You know, normal tracks were like four foot, something like that. Here we're on a six foot table. So um, we have our car stands. You want to always have the car so the tires aren't sitting on the ground, you know, flat spot the tires and stuff. So you always want to have your car stands. Uh, have the charger on the side, charging batteries. You know, you got the Trinity battery charging here. Um, you always want to have a flat surface so you can, uh, you know, check your ride height, make sure that it's where you want it to be because it's a higher bite out there having the car one millimeter, two millimeters higher is a big deal. So you want to make sure your ride height's all the same. So we have that. We have a good toolbox. Always got to have a good toolbox. And, uh, you know, your glue and, you know, your Trinity body blast there to clean your bodies. I see it's pretty important to keep your area clean and organized. So, you know, if you do have any issues, you're able to tear down or work on the car and you know where everything is at all times. Right, yeah, we, I have new tires on there for the main, but I always try to keep some tires off to the side there. So um, you always mark them, make sure that you know which one's left, which one's right, you know. Um, that's a key thing, your inserts, you know, you make sure how many runs are on the inserts and stuff like that. You know, all these things are, are critical. Um, people, Some people take for granted that, you know, how many runs are on your inserts, but when you're running on a high bite surface and, you know, all the times are super close, all those little things matter. Yeah, it's all the little things and the little details that you have to pay attention to to make a successful race day.
we discussed a little earlier, and one of the points that we want to focus on here is ride height today. You know, you said it was you know very critical for you know a very small aspect, but very critical on an RC car when you're racing in a competition. Right here, we have the J Concept setup board, and uh, just, let's just go over here and tell the folks on how to set and check your uh, proper ride height. Yeah, so like on the uh, on the 22.4 here, we run a little lower ride height in the front than we do on the rear. So we run about 19 millimeters in the front and 21 in the rear. So you take your little trusty gauge and uh, put her on 19. There's little lines on there to let you know. And uh, you kind of want to like let the car settle, not so much just like set it on there because you could set it on there and it not be quite correct. So you kind of want to drop it a little bit, let it settle, let it rebound back up. And then you kind of pick a flat spot on the chassis and then just tap on the top of the car to make sure that it, it, it's right on where that, that um, whatever millimeter you want to have a ride height. We're at 19 here. So it's right at 19. Then we readjust our gauge back to 21 here where we want the rear. And then we we'll redo it again. We'll just drop it back down. We'll go back in the back, check it again. It's right up against the stop. And uh, we checked our ride height. We're ready to go for the main. Now, what if the car was a little out of adjustment? Now, what would a, a, a racer do? I mean, we have the proper gauge. You know, what if it was a little higher? What would a, a, a racer do to make that correction on this car? Well, all, most all the cars will have um, adjustable ride height, so you, you'll be able to turn the shock collars uh, up or down to, to adjust your your, uh, your ride height. So um, you just want to make sure, like I, I usually do half turns and count how many half turns I do on one side, so I do the same amount on the other side. And then maybe also check with some calipers side to side to make sure that the distance from the shock cap to the to where you're actually adjusting is the same side to side. So to make sure that you don't have you know spring, more spring pressure on one side than the other. So just make sure everything's square side to side, and uh, you should be good to go for the main. Awesome. Well, thanks, Jr. And hopefully those little uh, tech tips helped you out there. And uh, let's go back to some racing action with Jr. Mitch. Once again, back here with J.R. Mitch, we seen your car go around on the racetrack, and uh, we, you know we covered checking the ride height on your uh, TLR 22.4, and uh, now here we have the uh, TLR 22 uh, mid motor configuration, and uh, we want to go over on setting on uh, your, your turnbuckles. I mean, you want to keep the car straight, you want to keep the wheels in a, a particular manner, and uh, let's go over that. Yeah, I mean, um, mostly we run like maybe negative one, maybe sometimes negative two on the camber. Um, and there, there, some people have some gauges. I basically do mine by eye just to see how it looks, make sure that it doesn't look wrong. Um, but a lot of times when people are doing turnbuckles too, they just they get the turnbuckles out of the bag, they, they just tuck them out and they put them on the car. But to do the turnbuckles the right way, so when you go to adjust them, you can adjust them the right way, both side to side, front to back, so it's always the same. So on the turnbuckle, if you look on the turnbuckle, there is a little indicator line here that'll um, indicate that they're always going to be turning the same way either in you know front to back is in or, or front to back to front is out so if you have this on the same side on the other side of the car your turnbuckles are always your wrench is always going the same way to do the same adjustment if you have this line on the opposite side on the other car you're going to be doing the opposite direction so I always keep mine where the lines are all the same side so that your wrench is always going the same direction. And it's just a little thing that people don't realize but that's put on there to, uh, to help you uh, make sure that when you go to look at it to no do it, you're going the right way. Um, but as in adjusting the, t the camber, um, a lot of people have camber gauges, they use a soda can, they do, do stuff like that. And I'm, I can do like maybe a little bit with a soda can, but more of it's just like an eye kind of thing and, and make sure that it's not exaggerated, but it's not positive camber also. Mm -hmm. 